Hello, and welcome back to our continuing series of video tutorials on Corel's Video Studio. Today is very special because this is the first tutorial I've created using version X3. This new version just released allows you to be more creative and precise with your videos while still keeping the process fun and faster than ever before. Many new features have been added and existing ones enhanced. This tutorial will be a part one, so be sure to view part two next to see additional new features in X3. Shall we take a look? If you've been using version X2 or lower, the first thing you'll notice is right when you launch the application. In the X2 launcher, you have three choices of where to start. The DV to DVD wizard, the movie wizard, and the video studio editor. Now we have three choices similar to those previous ones, but with one important addition, Burn, or Corel DVD Factory 2010 as it's called once you launch it. Both this and the redesigned Easy Edit mode have consistently similar interfaces. DVD Factory can also be launched from within the Advanced Editor. Let's now jump into the Advanced Edit mode to quickly review some of the new features there. Notice some differences? More improvements have been made, such as fewer tabs along the top. Just the basics, actually. All the other choices are logically located in each tab. This is most evident in the Edit tab. This has your Media Library, Transitions, Titles, Graphics, which include color backgrounds, objects, picture frames, and your flash animations, video filters, and finally, the audio library. The toolbar down here has a few adjustments as well. As a reference, here's a graphic of the X2 version's interface. Notice the differences? Nothing too dramatic, but just rearranged to more logical positions, mainly at the request of users, along with a more updated design. But whichever mode you choose to jump into, I guarantee it will respond faster than anything in version X2. As an example, let me jump from the timeline to the storyboard, back the timeline, and then to the audio mixer. It was never this quick in previous versions. Video Studio has also improved the ability to copy clips from one place to another. You simply right-click, copy, and then wherever you move your mouse, a ghost of the previous clip that you copied will follow along. Simply right-click to drop it where you want to put it next. Replacing a video clip has also gotten easier. As long as the new clip is at least the same length as the clip you're replacing, you simply drag the clip over the new one, hold down the control key, and drop it. But what if it isn't long enough? Let me try this clip here. Uh, replace clip, source duration is too short. All right, let's drag another one. Hold the control key, replace clip, and the clip is replaced. Output options have also been enhanced. One of the new choices is upload to Vimeo. Vimeo is a video sharing site that looks for quality over quantity. But similar to YouTube, it's also free and accepts HD clips. And you can also upgrade to a premium version. Speaking of YouTube, an HD option is now available for upload. Another new choice is with MPEG-4. Simply create video file, go down to MPEG-4, and we also have HD compressions and H.264, which is great compression for HD on the web. Oh, and Video Studio X3 is also Windows 7 compatible. Well, this is all we have time for in this tutorial. I'll continue with a quick overview of new features in part two of this series.